Hi guys, Shanoa Grove here from Texas Rias. Excited to be joining all of you guys tonight as part of our Real Estate Investor Association. Uh, every Tuesday we get together and we talk about the different ways to be successful as a real estate investor. And today we're gonna talk about uh, a bunch of tribal knowledge. We're gonna share a market update. We're gonna share the forecast, so what the forecast looks like for uh, 2022. We're gonna share some of the January figures that we already have as we go through. And excited to be here with all of you guys. So welcome to the Real Estate Investor Association. Uh, we've been running this association. We've been part of this association since we first started investing uh, back in 2003. So almost two decades of investing in real estate here in Texas without having to update our resume, uh, without having to go to work for anybody else. And who in here would like to say the same thing in two decades as well? And today sounds good too, right? So, so we're gonna we're gonna figure that out for you guys. Uh, so I uh, want to just share a little bit about us and what we are trying to achieve as part of Texas RIA. So uh, for us, when I say us, I'm referring to my husband and I. So when we first were interested in investing in real estate, we did what you guys are doing, which is we walked into a local real estate investor association. It was there that we got the contacts, the contracts, and the contractors to be successful in our business. It was there that we met all of the people who were kind enough and generous enough to open up, uh, uh, get us behind the curtain and show us what to do, show us what not to do. It was there that we got our first deal and it was here that we got our last deal. So this association is uh, built to serve and in, the, in a way, us uh, continuing to uh, lead it is a way of paying back everything that this association has done for us, as well as paying it forward. I don't know, but it uh, has given us a lot of joy. And by joy, I mean income, wealth, and uh, happiness from those things. Now, obviously money doesn't make you uh, happy, but if you give enough of it away, right, it certainly does uh, feel, uh, fill your heart. So I uh, want you to invite all of you guys to join us online as well. So we have our Texas Rias Facebook page. Love to have you guys join. We have over 10,000 members on our Texas Rias Facebook page. So if you want to join and interact with other real estate investors, love to have you guys do that. We also have a YouTube channel, Texas Rias. So if you like, if this is your first time with us and you want to see like what other tribal knowledge presentations uh, sound like, uh, what other market updates sound like, you're welcome to join us in that aspect as well. And then we also have a, a, a little TV show, uh, Houses Flipping People. So some of you guys may have seen our van parked out front. Uh, usually that's a photo op for a lot of investors. So I uh, would love to have you guys join us uh, on our socials. Uh, for us, uh, to be clear, we are Texans teaching Texans how to invest in Texas using strategies that work in Texas. So I know a lot of times I'll meet people who are uh, on uh, attending university, YouTube university, right? And getting a lot of uh, information that may or may not be applicable here in Texas. So even though I have a YouTube channel uh, and I'm one of those folks that are helping people as they uh, get on that journey, um, all I will say is the only place that I can go deep in my knowledge, deep in my network and uh, create an economy around is here in Texas. Uh, but for those of you guys who are thinking, who live in Texas and are thinking, Ah, oh, and I hear some people say this from time to time, it's too expensive here in Texas, so I'm gonna go and invest someplace else. Well, Texas is like the eighth largest GDP in the world. Uh, so if you can't find your deal here, then something's gone terribly wrong for you. Uh, so the opportunities are here and I'd love to help you guys through those. Um, and for us, we only invest in Texas. Uh, if you are here and you're thinking you want to invest in some other state, then I'm probably not going to be the person for you. Uh, but if you specifically are interested in investing in Texas, then this is, you guys are at the right spot. So I want to welcome all of you guys. I've got some slides playing in the background. I call them my tribal knowledge slides. Uh, this is where you can pick up little tidbits of information as we're going through the presentation. And um, I would love to ask, I know we've got some folks here uh, who are live with us, and if you guys would like to join us live, you're welcome to join us live. We meet every Tuesday, uh, so we meet every Tuesday. You guys are uh, welcome to uh, join us for those of you guys who are online and wanna see a little bit about what we do in person. And one of the things that I love to do when we are here in person is help you guys along your path. And I'd love to bring some of you up here who maybe are working on a deal already, uh, maybe a little stuck, maybe have some questions. So uh, what is your name, ma'am? Christina. 
Christina, would you mind joining us at the uh, mic? And then I'll ask you a couple of questions and we can see maybe how we can help you in your real estate investing journey. Uh, as you were walking in, you had mentioned that you had a deal that you were working on. So you want to tell us about it and kind of tell us where maybe you might be a little stuck and how we can help. Well, I was door knocking with a colleague and we saw a house that was all boarded up, fit the perfect description for a deal. We uh, skip traced, found the owners, they lived um, about two streets down and we were going up to the house, but I had no idea what I was going to be okay. saying, how okay. to get the deal. You were just going on adrenaline. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's like, okay. I saw you guys yeah. and I was like, okay, let's do this. And then I'm there. I'm like, what am I going to say to these people? Well, they didn't answer, but <laughs> I know where they live. I know. <laughs> 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 I know their name and where they live. So. Okay, so um, so you skip trace them. Did you get their Did you get their uh, a phone number and email address as well? No. Okay. It was just the name and their address. Just the name and their address. You know how to get their phone number? I don't. Know. Okay, that's going to be a better skip trace than the one that you got. So you can do skip traces that are five dollars skip traces. You can do skip traces that are sixty dollars skip traces, right? Okay. But I will tell you, guys, where do you who's who's the best skip trace service out there? Who's the best skip trace service out there? Who's going to give you all of the information and data? and personal private stuff that you could ever want or need about the about the owner of that property who is that uh, batch leads. someone said batch leads no the neighbor the neighbor yeah what the what your neighbors know about you will probably freak you out i'm just saying okay but if you have not if you have not yet gone to knock on the neighbor's doors to ask hey, how can I get in touch with this person? Obviously you have their address, you can go and knock them. But while you're there, always ask the neighbors like, hey, how can I find this person? Do you have contact information? And a lot of times with the neighbor, you'll be dropping off your contact information because they don't know who you are and they don't want to just be giving out their you know, information. Uh, you know, the, the way that I, you might be able to kind of get past that might be to say, you know, you're probably a little sick and tired of seeing this house boarded up like this. Um, it seems like you're probably the one who's over here all the time, probably mowing the lawn or picking up the trash. You know, you're probably getting a little tired of, of, of doing that. So that's called, that's called labeling. So you're labeling some of the feelings, you're labeling some of the emotions that, that, they, that they're having. As you start to label and identify some of those emotions, what do you, what, what, what's, what's happening between you and that other person? Rapport. You're building rapport. Does it do, does it does it feel like you already understand them when you are telling them that all the things that they're feeling that they're not exactly sharing to, sharing with you? And the answer is yes. Is that going to open them up possibly to share? Uh, you know, you know, I'd love to be able to take this eyesore off of your hands so you're not you know worried about kids coming over. You know, you're probably worried about kids coming over, vandalizing, breaking in. You know, doing stuff that you know disturbing you guys. Uh, it's 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 can, can be a problem. And it can open even you up for liability. This is one of the great ways to be able to just kind of open it up. Now, you um, are in a position though where you already know where the owners are. If you did not know where the owners are and, and the neighbors are a little shut down, what, what typically works with the neighbors? Tip. A tip, yes. Like, like how much? 50 bucks. 50 bucks? Is, fi is $50 going to get you a number? <laughs> someone says someone says yes I think so uh, for me I'll go up you know listen if I can get the information to be able to contact this person and if I end up buying this house I'd love to pay you $500 just for connecting me with this person now are they really open now this is not just for a phone number right this is this is like if I'm closing on this house and all of a sudden they'll go from neighbor amnesia <clears throat> It's like you just vaccinated them with the neighbor like truth serum to tell you everything that's going on here, right? So $50, that, that, that might work, but uh, for me, I wanna get as much as I possibly can get and I wanna be able to only pay them if I'm able to close on that property. So let's go back to you're in front of the house. So, so, so after you knocked on the door, they didn't answer. Um, were you sure they weren't home? I feel like they were. You feel like they were yeah, home. Was there a dog in the house? There was a car. There was a car? It just looked like there was somebody home. And they had the ring, so. Oh, they had the ring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fun. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so um, sometimes you can hear a dog inside too. So sometimes that's an indicator. 
Um, you know, I just keep keep it in the ring and just say, hey, hey, you know, Christina here. I'd love to talk to you guys. Would you mind opening it up? Just want to have a quick question for you and see what happens, right? Okay. So um, get 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 obnoxious, not obnoxious, but get get uncomfortable, right? So you already got that far. You already got that uncomfortable. Uh, after you knocked on the door, they didn't answer. Then what did you do? Well, I jotted down their. Um Address. Draw down their address. Go ahead and eat, uh, mail them. And you can letter. mail them. Which, what else should she have done while she was there? S sit again. Leave a note. Yeah. They don't know who you are. They just see you on the ring. You look like a nice lady, right? But I mean, no, I don't, no one knows, right? So, 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 but if you would have left them a note, then they would have known, okay, this is what she's, you know, reaching out about, right? So, I, you know, if, if you've taken the time to get there, um, and if you live, you know, 30 minutes across town, you might as well leave as much marketing material behind as you possibly can. So that marketing material might be a business card. It might be a, a personal note. It might be just a, you know, I'd love to talk to you about buying your house that you write in a big Sharpie and then you take it and you send it through a printer and you print 50 of them. So you just always have those in your car with you and ready to go. Not that it takes a whole lot of time, yeah. but, but just <laughs> so that it's ready to go. And, and always leave something behind because um, you, you, know, you want them to be able to reach out to you. And you can tell them, I'm gonna follow up with you tomorrow. So just get, you know, yeah. get, it, get it while it's good and maybe even kind of just walk around the house. And sometimes walking around the house is gonna pull somebody out of their house to say, okay, what's going on here? And then say, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. You probably, you're probably thinking that I'm some creeper. You're probably thinking, so again, you're, you're doing, um, you're labeling their emotions, you're labeling their feelings. So when, when you say those uncomfortable things, you probably think I'm here to rob you or something. What are they thinking? Okay, she probably would not say that if she were actually here to rob me right now, right? So they start to feel comfortable and that's when they start to open up. So uh, you did the skip trace, so you got uh, their name, you got their uh, address, mailing address. I'm curious, do they own any other properties? Um, not that I researched. Not that you saw, okay. And then, and then you mentioned something, you used the word, I think it's a good deal. deal. How are you defining that? Well, the lot size in that area, there are lots of new construction homes being purchased and then uh, remodeled as well. And the area is south, maybe about 15 minutes away from downtown, um, pretty close by to uh, like the Tower of Americas, uh, Riverwalk, things like that. So that little neighborhood right I'm there. I'm hearing good no location, but do you guys hear that this is a good deal yet? No, what does she need to know? She needs to know the numbers, right? <laughs> So what are the numbers? What's it worth? What's the ARV? What does it need in yeah, terms of repairs? And so, so, so this is where we go, like we kind of take a step back and it's like prospect or suspect. Right now it's just a suspect. Right now it's just a vacant, maybe boarded up house that needs repairs. Just because a house needs repairs doesn't mean that it's necessarily a good deal. It's still, we're still in suspect mode. And then I want to play a little announcement for those of us who are online, uh, just a little commercial for Texas Rio, just so you guys can learn a little bit more about us as well. So let me. Uh, Would you like to that? be a real estate investor in Texas? Come to one of our free local meetings to get access to free training, wholesale properties, capital, and power teams. Click on the link below to find a meeting near you and register for free. Awesome. So let's get back to this. Uh, so I'm super curious about this. So, so how are we going to go and figure out if it's a suspect or a prospect? What are your next steps? Do you know what those are? No. What are we going to tell her to go do? Get an appraisal? No. no I meant <laughs> get get comps. Yeah. Do a CMA. How are you going to do a CMA? I'm a realtor. You're a realtor. Good. Okay. Good, good, good. Okay. So you're going to do it yourself. So you know what the value is. What's your next step? Finding a partner. Finding a partner. You can do that too. Right. But what else, what else do you want to know about? You know, if you, if you brought that deal to me and you said, you know, I want to partner with you on this deal. I'm still going to say, I'm still going to ask you a couple of questions. I'm going to want to know two more things. You've given me the value, but what else, what else is missing? What's the rehab cost? Yeah. What else is missing? The profit, okay. Well, how do we get there? And we get it under contract, but how do we get to the profit part? What do we need to know? We that's the comps. What do we need to know? 
We need to know how much the seller is willing to sell it for. And then we also want to do a little research behind the scenes even before we talk to seller to figure out what? The rehab, yeah, we talked about the rehab, but what else do we want to find? ARV, ARV we talked about the comps, but what else do we want to find? Mm, what else do we want to find? Do we want to know how much they owe on the property? Yes, we really want to know how much they owe on the property. So if you're telling me this is an area that has an ARV of 400,000, which probably sounds in range, yes? Yes. Okay, yeah, so let's say the ARV is 400,000. It's one kind of deal if they owe 200,000. It's another kind of deal if they owe 450,000, right? Yeah. Right, so now we're, you know, now we're kind of narrowing down suspect prospects, suspect prospects, so we're getting closer. So it's great to know what the value is. It's great to know what the rehab is, but we gotta know, okay, is there, is there any equity here? Mm -hmm. Are there other liens or judgments here, right, that might affect it? Now, and then of course we gotta know, you know, so it's, I get a lot of new investors who will come to me and say, oh, you know, I think I've got this deal. And it's like, and they give me all the information that I just asked for. And then I'm like, this sounds, this sounds good, right? You know, you know what the, what's owed on it. You know what the ARV is. You got a kind of an idea of what the repairs are, right? Um, even though you haven't been in the house, you can kind of get some directional knowledge, just kind of just as I'm thinking through what you're telling me. But so my next question is gonna be what? Have you talked to the owner? Have you talked to the seller? Do they want, do they yeah. want to sell, right? So how far down this rabbit hole am I gonna go with you, right? And then what do they want to sell for? Because again, if the ARV is 400, they owe 200, but they're not really motivated, right? I'm not really that motivated, so I wanna sell for 400. I want full price for it. Right? Are we, are, you know, are we kind of narrowing down strategies? The answer is yes. Now, and now, as a realtor, what is one of your strategies? To well, uh, do my CMA on it and see what the value, how much it would be after yeah. it's rehabbed. Yes, yeah. Um, so, good. so if they come back to you and say, let's say our research says ARV is four hundred. Let's say our research says um, repairs are, you know, sixty. Let's just throw out a number. Um, and then let's say that they tell you that they want to sell it for 340. Yeah. What, 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 what strategy are you going to use? Is that a buy, fix, and flip? N not unless you want to lose money on it, right? Is that a wholesale? So who are you going to wholesale that stinker to, right? Who, does, who doesn't want to make money? So, so what's your backup strategy? You're a realtor. I want to buy it as... A fix and flip, I want to get it as a wholesale, I want to get it as a rental, but at this price, this is not going to work. Mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm a real, I didn't really come over here to list it, but I am a realtor, so that is an option if you'd like to pursue that route. So you're kind of, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. you're figuring it all out, and, the, and this is the process that you go through to be able to figure it all out. So I, I just want to say, um, number one, I applaud you for being up here. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and number two, well, before, even before you hopped up here, I applaud you for going to um, knock on their door and just having the courage and the guts to be able to do that. Uh, that courage and that guts and that smile uh, will serve you uh, hugely, obviously, as a, as a realtor and as a real estate investor. But do you think you got some of the couple, three, four things that you need to do next, right, to be able to turn it from a suspect into a prospect? So was this helpful? Very okay, good. Okay, yeah. awesome. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, thank you, thank you, Christine. Appreciate that. Uh, Leticia, you had also uh, came up and, and, and said that you might be open to uh, maybe sharing some of your uh, wants or needs. Would you, would you be open to hopping over here? Okay, thank you. So, Leticia, what, tell me what you're doing right now. So I'm, I am new to Texas. New to Texas from uh, where? I've only been here for six months. Six. I'm from Atlanta. Atlanta, okay, um, cool. I happen to say, think that the property values are way better over here than in Atlanta. Okay, okay, saying. yeah. So, <laughs> but um, I had took one of your trainings in December and I was really interested in like subject two and okay. mortgage wraparound. Okay. So my question is really about finding, like how do you determine that strategy. I mm -hmm. mean, there's a bunch of other, but that one just really 
piqued my curiosity and I really liked okay like that. <laughs> that's, that that's one of my favorite uh, strategies in fact every property that someone brings me right so uh, Christina even the one that you had one of the things I would have asked you was can I buy it subject to the existing financing so what does that mean it's basically can I take over the loan why do I want to take over the loan because I want to keep my powder dry because I want to be able to apply my money towards the renovation, right? Mm -hmm. um, and for some people, it could be because they don't have any money and this is the only way that they could buy, which is great too, right? right? They don't have to get a hard money loan. So instead of paying a hard money lender 12 to 15% interest, maybe instead they're just taking over someone's uh, mortgage that might be at 3, 4, 5% interest, right? So a much better rate. So that's an opportunity there. So. I will say, um, and, and guys, for those of you guys who are new to the concept of buying subject to uh, the wraparound mortgage, taking over payments, we're going to talk about that a little bit tonight as we go through the presentation. But um, so, so when I categorize that, I categorize that as a, as a buying strategy, okay, as a buying strategy. And I do have a lot of people who will, you know, kind of say like, I want to, I want to do, you know, this, I want to do this one strategy because I, I like it. Sounds cool. Little or no money, whatever it may be that, that kind of triggered that for you. But for me, that's, that's a little bit putting the cart ahead of the horse. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the marketing that we need to do. So, so for me, that's where everything, the, the strategies are where it's sexy, the strategies where it's exciting, the strategies is where you convert into, into money, right? But it's the marketing that's going to even get you into an opportunity where you might be able to get there. So, you know, what I typically tell people is, you know, I, I find that most people are marketing for deals. They're marketing for people with equity. But the issue is sometimes even though you're marketing for equity, you might not be able, you might not actually get a lead that has equity in it, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to be, and this is something I call, uh, uh, the way that we, Phil and I, my husband and I talk about it, is being strategically agnostic, right? So the, uh, our idea is, do I want every single fix and flip out there? The answer is yes, right? We all do. Do I want every single rental that I can possibly get? Yes, we all do. Do I want to be able to downshift into a wholesale if it's not the deal for? Yes, of course, definitely, right? Um, but 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 for me, I, I want to I want to um, approach every deal with a beginner's mind. Okay, I want to go Zen. I want to go Buddha. I want to I want to just like tell me tell me what's going on. Tell me what's going on, because when I go in there and I say. I only want to buy it if I can buy it subject to. It's like I'm, I've got blinders on that's going to stop me from maybe getting to where I want to go. So for me, beginner's mind, Buddha's mind. I uh, didn't know you were going to be talking about Buddha's mind at a real estate meeting, but, but that's really where the key to unlocking a lot of this opportunity. So, so because you're marketing, even though you're marketing for equity, you might get somebody who has you know, little, no, or, ne or negative equity, right? Mm -hmm. Or you might get someone who's not motivated, right? And in that case, you know, you're going to call Christina and say, hey, Christina, I got somebody who wants to sell, but they're not super motivated. They want to sell it for a full price. I can't make money off of this real estate investor. You know, Christina, would you figure out how to pay me a referral fee if I brought you this deal and you listed it and you made money off of, right? So for me, I want to be strategically agnostic. But the truth is, yes, I want to buy every house subject to the existing financing because I want to keep as much of my powder dry as possible, both for my fix and flips as well as even for my rental properties. Why would I want to buy subject to someone's ex and take over someone's existing payment for my rental properties? Who in here has rental properties? Just curious. Anybody in here already have rental properties? Okay, a couple of you guys. Um, so. So um, what you will find as a real estate investor is at some point you become persona non grata with the bank. What does that mean? What does that mean? Not welcome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But why, why would you not be welcome uh, with a lender? High, you're high risk. Okay. Mm. Depends on how many you purchase. Say it again. Okay, debt to income, yeah. What else? Affecting their bottom line. So here's, here's what you need to know. There is a glass ceiling for real estate investors. Mm. What is that? It is that most lenders only wanna give us somewhere between four and 10 loans. So it's kind of a glass ceiling, right? Mm. That's why Leticia says, I really want to know more about this strategy. Uh, what is this thing that you speak of that, <laughs> that is taking over people's loans? I really want to know more about that. 
because so so for uh, for that reason that's allowed us to buy a ton of rental properties that because we don't have to get bank qualifying for those we just take over the payments of someone who else someone else who's already gotten that bank uh, qualification done so so for me that's one of the reasons why especially for all my rental properties I'm always asking, can I get it with the, with the loan, right? Because I know that I'm, I'm already persona non grata with the bank, even though I have a ton of money in the bank, even though I have great credit, even though I have, you know, tax returns for, you know, almost 20 years, right? Cause that's another thing that will stop you guys. If you think you're going to get a loan from a bank and you just quit your job and you've been and you're now only full-time investing, what does a bank want to see? They want to see two years of tax returns. That's after they look at your third grade report card. You guys are, you guys have been asked for that, I'm sure. Uh, but they want two years tax returns. So especially for brand new investors, you're not getting a traditional mortgage, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Chase City, et cetera, unless you've got those tax returns. And then at some point, even though great credit, great income, um, lots of experience, um, beautiful smile, you know, they're going to say, yeah, yeah I'm going to have to pass, right? So the reason why we want all of you guys to be aware of that, uh, this option before you get in front of a lender is because I don't want you to be, so, so everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. So this, this issue punches a lot of brand new investors in the face. Mm -hmm. So I don't want it to punch any of you guys in the face. I want you guys to be thinking in advance if I'm gonna wanna buy rental properties and a lot of them, mm -hmm. because most people, and I'm sure, are, are, is, are some of you guys interested in buying rental properties? Okay, yeah, so, 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 so and, and you're doing it because you wanna build up cash flow, because you want mailbox money, because you wanna go and just like be on a beach somewhere, right? So, so here's, here's, here's the issue. To be able to get as much cash flow as you need, mailbox money as you need to be able to feel comfortable on the beach, usually for the San Antonio market, that's somewhere between 20 and 40 houses. For the Austin market, that's somewhere between 10 and 20 houses. For Dallas and Houston, that's somewhere in between probably 15 and 30-ish and houses, right? Mm -hmm. So, and then I just told you that most banks only wanna give you somewhere between four and 10 loans, so what are you thinking? How am I, how am I going to get there? Right. Because it's going to take you approximately forever. Right. And then you're going to be like, Oh, this doesn't work before you even get going. So having that strategy. So, so you can all thank Leticia for, uh, inter by, by thank by putting your hands together, uh, by introducing this concept to you. Thank you. And guys, um, I am, uh, you guys are part of our live audience tonight. So I want to just thank all of you guys for being here. You probably did not know that you were going to be part of our live audience, but I want to just kind of scan all of you guys. Uh, but I'm curious, how many of you guys have been, have watched some of these HGTV shows and how many of you guys have said, Hmm, I might be kind of interested in, um, being on one of those HGTV shows, or I think that would be interesting. How many of you guys? Okay. One, two. Okay, good. All right. A couple of you guys. Um, uh, so we're very uh, blessed and honored tonight to have Olivia Hathaway. Uh, she is the host of Houses Flipping People, so she's uh, joined us tonight. And um, you want to tell them a little bit about Houses Flipping People and, uh, and, 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 and what it showcases and, and how it can help the people that are here with us. So guys, hi everyone. Uh, House Flipping People, I go around Texas and I interview investors and share their stories, how successful they have been, the challenge and the, the amazing things that they have learned and every single deal that they have been doing as they go through the process. So I don't share just the house, but I also share the investor, their transformation as well. So I'd love to have you guys on my next episode. Uh, in the meantime, just follow us on the YouTube. That's where we are hosting, uh, sorry, Houses Flipping People. So. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for that. So the story of Texas Rias is, is uh, the story of its members, right? The story of houses flipping people is the story of the Texas Rias members. So uh, Olivia has done an amazing job interviewing uh, multiple people that are part of this association and how their lives have completely transformed as a result of doing real estate. So it's, it, we, there's, there's discussion about the house, but really it's just about how, you know, they've, they've grown as a person or they've opened up and blossomed as a person, how 
they've maybe quit a job that they no longer love uh, as well. So love to have you guys join us as uh, part of Houses uh, Flipping People and also join us live for those of you guys who are online. Uh, we have a meeting coming up on March 1st at the Austin Omni South Park. Uh, for those of you guys who are watching online, you can just click the link below and get registered for that. And I want to share a little uh, commercial for Houses Flipping People just so you can kind of get another idea of what we share as part of this community. Houses Flipping People is sponsored by Texas REITs, the largest network of real estate investor associations in Texas. So if you have even the slightest interest in investing in real estate, come to one of our local free meetings to learn how. Click on the link below. Awesome. Thank you so much, Olivia, for joining us. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. All right, guys, uh, thank you for uh, joining us uh, for that live taping of the show. Appreciate that.